Does your family celebrate Advent? Growing up, our family never did, but over the last few years, I've been hearing a lot more about it, and it's really made me curious what Advent is all about and why we should celebrate. So this week, I thought it would be really interesting to talk to Asherita Choo Choo, author of the book, Unwrapping the Names of Jesus, an Advent Devotional. In today's podcast, we are talking all about Advent, what it's about, why we should celebrate, and how this beautiful little book can help us make this Christmas season even more meaningful than it is already. So if this sounds like the kind of thing you would like in your life this Christmas season, definitely stay tuned. All right, today we are talking with Asherita Choo Choo, author of the book, Unwrapping the Names of Jesus in Advent Devotional. Thank you so much, Asherita, for agreeing to talk with us today. Brittany, it's my joy to be here. Well, I wanted to say I grew up in a home where we didn't actually celebrate Advent as a family. It was a Christian home, but we just didn't do the whole Advent thing. So this is something that I honestly don't know a lot about. So I'm really excited for you to um, tell us more about this. I know that you have a book on it. Um, So for those of us who did not grow up celebrating Advent, um, tell us a little bit about it. What is Advent? Why do we celebrate it? Why should we care? Yeah, so I actually didn't grow up celebrating Advent either. (laughs) Um, And really, it probably wasn't until college that I saw it popping up. You know, sometimes when um, God is laying something on your heart or putting it in your life, it pops up everywhere. That's what Advent was like for me in college. Um, And so I began to explore this idea, this season of preparing our hearts to celebrate Jesus. But it's nothing new. Um, The church has been celebrating Advent. Um, Our earliest records are all the way back to 300 AD. Um, And different denominations celebrate it in different ways. But typically it's the four weeks leading up to Christmas Day. Um, And you can count backwards for four Sundays. Um, This year in 2018 is December 2nd, that is beginning of Advent, and each week has a different theme that centers our hearts on Jesus. But the word Advent um, comes from the Latin for Adventus, which means coming. Um, And what I love about this is it's not just the first coming of Jesus, but also the second coming of Jesus. And so there are these rich traditions and passages that we read from scripture that orient our hearts to, yes, prepare him room um, as, you know, Mary and Joseph were looking for space for Jesus to be born, but also to prepare our hearts for his second coming as well. So once you learned more about Advent and you saw that God was putting it on your heart, how did that start to be a thing for you? How did you start celebrating it or what did it look like for you right at first? Yeah, so Christmas for me, um, (laughs) this is like so embarrassing to admit, but um, I never really liked Christmas um, because of a a lot of the stress and commotion and commercialism that surrounds the holiday. Um, I grew up as a missionary kid in Romania and there was just always so many things to do, so many ministries and you know, opportunities to serve on top of all of the traditions, all of the decorating and the baking. Um, and it was all just so overwhelming for my soul. I just wanted some quiet, some peace and quiet for Christmas. And that is hard to come by. So when I stumbled into this um, you know, practice of Advent in college, one of the things that attracted me to it was the simplicity. Um, you know, I mentioned that there are four different weeks with four different themes and different readings that go with that. Um, and honestly, that never really made sense to me. I, I didn't quite grasp, okay, why are we reading these passages? But about four or five years ago, um, the Lord just laid it on my heart. You know, we say that the reason for the season is Jesus, right? But how often do we actually prepare our hearts for that? We prepare our homes, the trees, um, you know, the presents, the shopping, all of that, but there's not much that we do to really focus in on the gift of Jesus. So a few years ago, I started um, looking at the names of Jesus And what I found by studying a different name each day during Advent was that each 
name of Jesus reveals a different facet of his character. Um, and so it was so neat because every day, Brittany, it felt like I was opening up another gift, right? The great high priest, Lamb of God, Emmanuel, bread of life. Um, and every single day I was left just in awe and wonder of who Jesus is. So it really felt like, I don't know if you've ever seen those advent calendars with chocolate for each day leading up to the 25th and you open it up and like, there it is. That's a little gift for that day. But that's what advent felt like for me that first year. Um, just a climax of gift after gift after gift that I got to unwrap in Jesus's names. And then Christmas morning, that that wonder that children feel on Christmas Day that is often lost to us as adults. Um, it was just that, it was incredible to feel that wonder Christmas morning that Jesus was born. And here are all the layers of meaning and riches and gifts in the person of who he is. So that is where this tradition of combining Advent, which is a historically rich and old tradition, with this new tradition of worshiping Jesus by studying his names, a different name each day of Advent, bringing those together, that's where this book, um, Unwrapping the Names of Jesus, was born out of. So let me ask you on just a really practical level. First of all, that sounds beautiful to go through, and I have gone through your book, to just go through every day and to unwrap the names of Jesus and to receive all of these gifts in our heart. But I'm sure you also know we do still have to get the tree ready and get the house ready and get the kids ready and all of the things we have to get ready. How do we find the time to make the time and space for this bit of quiet to open this gift. I'm so glad you brought that up, Brittany, because <laughs> I am not here to add yet another thing to your plate. I mean, this season is already busy enough as it is, right? And our hearts are craving that rest and that quiet, not yet another thing on our to-do list. So I absolutely get where you're coming from. And one of the things that I love about this devotional in particular, but this practice of pausing each day to spend time with Jesus and marvel at the gift of who he is, is that um, in a very strange way, it doesn't add to what you're doing. It actually um, eliminates some of the overwhelm by bringing peace and rest into your heart, but then it adds new meaning to the other things that you're doing already. So for example, if we think about Jesus being the resurrection and the life, the fact that, um, you know, his interaction with Martha when her brother Lazarus had died, um, and he says, you know, do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? And she says, I, I believe it, Lord. And then he goes on and he raises Lazarus from the dead. But then just a few days later, when Jesus himself died, he rose himself from the grave. That power to overcome death with life lives inside of Jesus Christ. So one of the practical ways is as we're putting up the Christmas tree, or you know, if it's already up, you're sitting down with your family around the tree and looking at the evergreen, you know, being reminded of who Jesus is, that he is the resurrection and the life. I mean, that's the reason we use evergreen trees for Christmas trees. And then while you're there, you see the twinkling lights that can remind you that Jesus is the light of the world. What does that mean? Again, you know, these devotionals walk you through, they're just about two pages long, really. So in the time that it takes to brew your water for coffee, or in a short little bathroom break. I mean, I've been known to um, stash books in the bathroom drawers <laughs> because sometimes that's the only quiet I get in my day is behind that door. Or it might be, you know, in your lunch break at work, sitting in your car, pulling out the book. This is time that is invested um, in getting to know Jesus. I mean, if he's really the reason for the season, it would make sense that we would want to get to know him more. And as we know him more, it brings new layers of meaning and depth to all these other Christmas traditions that we do anyway. So I love the idea of using your book as a prompt for something to do every day, just a few minutes in the morning or whenever you have time. 
but can you tell us some more about the other things that your family does to prepare your hearts during Advent each year? Do you have other traditions that you do or things you love to do with your family? So one of the things that I love doing and that we'll be doing again this year is using these printable coloring ornaments that correspond with each of the names of Jesus in the devotional. Um, my husband actually hand drew them and um, it's so sweet. You know, the first time that he drew them, Carissa was just about a year old. And so hers were just little scribbles on these ornaments. Um, but now she's five, Amelia's two and a half, and Theo, my youngest, is five months. So he probably won't be coloring with us. But I just love the idea of us sitting around the dinner table, you know, enjoying a meal together, reading through the devotional, and then them being able to color you know, what does it mean that Jesus is the Prince of Peace? And there's a little dove there for that, or that he's the bread of life, and there's a loaf of bread. It's so really simplifying it, even for children to understand, and then hanging those ornaments on the tree so that as we walk about, you know, go about our day, and we're in the living room, we see those ornaments, we're reminded again of who Jesus is. Um, another fun tradition that is typical of Advent. Um, it's been kind of hit and miss in our home, honestly, but it's the Advent wreath. So lighting a different candle each week that represents the different themes of hope, preparation, joy, and love. And when you light that candle, you know, sitting around with the family and talking about why do we do this? Why is the season special? Um, and again, that theme of light, that Jesus is the light of the world. Um, just so many great conversations that can happen around that. But also in the devotional, um, every week I offer a family devotional guide that you can use. It suggests a passage of scripture to read that goes with that theme. It answers the question, why do we light this candle? Um, but it also offers each week family activities that you can do together. And these are activities that you can grow into. So some of these I haven't done with my kids yet, um, but some of them I look forward to doing and um, some friends of mine with middle schoolers and high schoolers have done you know it's for example driving around town and when you see a nativity scene outside of someone's home you know just making a mental note and writing writing a little post-it thank you so much for displaying the real reason for the season and, and sticking that in their post box just to encourage them in that way or cutting out little snowflakes which you know I don't know if you've ever done that out of paper where you fold it up and then cut little designs but then writing people's names on them and then hanging them up in the living room so that as you walk through this winter wonderland, you're also reminded to pray for people in your lives. There's so many fun family activities to do. Um, and again, this is not to add more to what you're already doing, but rather to think through how can you add more meaning and, and connect your traditions that you're already doing to the person of Jesus Christ because really it's all about him and he deserves all of our worship. So I have another question for you. You mentioned um, that you have three children who are very young. Um, I wanna talk about that. How do you do these activities in a way that they actually get something out of it and that it is actually something that does help prepare their hearts and isn't just, oh, we colored a picture and then we were done with it. Is there, do you have any tips for actually getting these lessons to stick rather than just another little craft that we do. Yeah, um, repetition works really well for us. I mean, my, my daughter's attention spans are super short, and so I can get maybe two or three minutes with them before they're on to the next thing, or they're elbowing each other, or they're stealing each other's, I don't know, breakfast cereal, I don't know. It's hard with the little kids, um, but what I found is, you know, if I have one theme in mind for the week or one name of Jesus, to, even if you just do one name with little ones for the whole week and keep coming back to that one name, by the end of December, that, that will be four or five names that you go through together. And those names and the meanings will be lodged into their hearts. Um, and so one thing that we're just finishing up with Carissa right now, actually in October and November, um, every day when I drop her off at preschool, we went through the fruit of the spirit. And so I would say, okay, Carissa, today your challenge is to 
pray and ask the Holy Spirit to work in you and be whatever fruit that weeks, love and joy and peace and patience. And it was the same thing every day when I drop her off, you know, kind of pegging these habits or these routines so that they can expect it. You know, we pull in the parking lot. All right, let's pray. This is your challenge of the week every single day. And then when I'd pick her up, we would talk about, okay, did you have the chance to show patience or self-control today? Let's talk about that. And then that would come up again later in the day in conversations. So now that we're kind of easing into Advent, I'm hoping to kind of use that same approach with my two little ones. Um, and it probably will be, you know, one main name of Jesus each week um, and kind of pegging the other ones around that. A great one for little ones is Emmanuel, God with us. I mean, what a beautiful picture that God himself in Philippians 2, Paul says um, that we should have the same attitude in us that was in Christ Jesus, who being himself God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing taking on the very nature of a servant and becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And so this is the gift of Christmas. It's that God himself took on human flesh and became a baby. And that means Emmanuel, God with us. And so when we see babies, we can talk about that. When we feel that we're alone, we can talk about how God is with us because of Jesus. So what I'm trying to say, I guess, is keeping it simple choosing one main name of Jesus each week and trying to bring that up in conversation again and again, using the coloring ornaments. Maybe when you sing Christmas carols, keep your ear open for carols that bring up those names so that you can talk about them in conversation. And then trying to create um, routines or rituals, whether that's the first time you get in the car or when you drop them off at preschool or when you sit down for lunch, it helps to have that consistency when you attach it to something you're already doing. So I love this idea of meditating on the names and how you even said Emmanuel is such a good one. Can you tell us a little bit more kind of the fruit that you've seen after that? Like we know it's a good practice. We know it's a good idea. Yes, we should be doing things like this. But what is kind of the end game or the benefit or the goal that we're looking for as we start to do this? I've heard this term a few years ago that we suffer from soul amnesia. It's we forget who God is and what he's done from one day to the next. And so like the Israelites in the desert, um, we begin to grumble and question is God really good? And it's not because he hasn't revealed himself to us, it's that we forget so quickly. And so this practice of worshiping Jesus, of studying his names, reminds us of what is true. And, and it moves us not just intellectually to assent to these truths, but it moves us emotionally to worship Jesus with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. And what I love about kind of pairing this practice of unwrapping Jesus' names with the season of Advent is that it doesn't just stop on December 25th. I mean, if you've spent, and it, it doesn't even really have to be each day of Advent. I mean, if you just took two or three days each week to study Jesus' names week after week in Advent, Yes, it leads to this culmination of joy on Christmas Day, but you take that deeper love and knowledge of Jesus with you into the new year. Come January 1st, you love him more, you know him more, and that carries through the whole year. So I love that it's um, a practical, simple tradition that you can kind of wrap your hands around and say, okay, I can do this. But it's something that, it's like the gift that keeps on giving, I guess. The more time we invest in knowing Jesus and getting to love him deeper, the richer our relationship with him is. And I would say it's the same with our kids, too. I mean, last year, when we went through unwrapping the names of Jesus with our kids, Carissa was four, Amelia was one and a half, so I don't think Amelia remembers anything, but I distinctly remember for a while, each night when we would say our bedtime prayers, we had been talking about Jesus' names, and um, I said, okay, well, let's thank Jesus for who he is, right? Because we thank him, especially around Thanksgiving, for the things he gives us. 
you know, thank you, Jesus, for toys and for clothes and for my little brother and sister. But let's thank Jesus for who he is, what is true about him. And so I just, I have this memory of Carissa as a four-year-old saying, thank you, Jesus, that you are the Lamb of God, that you are a great high priest. And she, I don't know that she fully understood what that meant. I mean, I don't know that I fully understand the the depths of what those names mean, even at 30. But just to hear her and her childlike faith thanking Jesus for who he is, that forms her their soul. It forms their understanding of who God is. And year over year, that will get deeper and richer. And what a wonderful heritage to give our kids. Yeah, that's awesome. I know I have kids about the same age. My oldest is older than yours. Um, but I have kids the same age as yours. And just getting to hear the things my kids talk theology, like super basic theology to each other, like, oh, yeah, God can do this. Oh, no, you know, they argue about theology, so apparently they're getting ready for the social media age. But um, I think that they do pick up more than we realize, and even if they don't fully understand it, it's starting to get inside of them, and that's awesome, just to lay that foundation ahead of time. Um, so you've told us about your book, which I know I'm sure you can get anywhere, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold. Um, tell us, I know you have a you have your main website, onethingalone.com. And then you also have a website that is specific to this book, unwrappingthenames.com. Can you tell us a little bit more about what is on that site, um, unwrappingthenames.com, and what we can find there? Yeah, so you can find all kinds of bonus content, is what I call it, um, on unwrappingthenames.com. You can find a free three-day sampler. So if this sounds like something you're interested in or you think your family might enjoy starting this new tradition, you can go at unwrappingthenames.com, download that free three-day sampler just to kind of get a feel for what the layout is, what the devotionals are like. We have the printable ornaments, like I mentioned, um, that you can download and print out as many times as you'd like for your kids and do this year over year. I mean, how fun would it be to collect the ornaments each year for the kids and kind of see their progression um, as they get to know Jesus more and even as maybe they get a bit more artsy each year. We have a playlist with songs that are all about Jesus. So if you're feeling a bit jaded about the reindeer and Santa and you kind of want to fill your home with more um, theologically rich carols and Christmas songs. I have a playlist that's already curated for you on Spotify and you can find that link there. And then throughout the book, um, I have, I know um, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you might not be able to see it, but throughout the book, there is this bonus content section that will point you to resources that you'll find online exclusively on our website for readers of the book. Um, things like a family activity guide, um, little pieces of paper that you can cut out and do fun scavenger hunts. Um, I have links to organizations that you can serve together as a family to bring more meaning to your Christmas traditions. So again, this isn't to give you more stuff to do or more on your to-do list. Rather, it's to bring more meaning to the things that you already do and cherish as a family. So you can find all those resources and really a whole lot more at unwrappingthenames.com. And I just want to clarify these resources that you're talking about, like the activities calendar, uh, whatever you said that was, and the Spotify and the ornaments. Um, are these things that are only for people who have purchased the book that, they, that then they can go get the bonuses or are these just for anybody who is interested in participating in Advent with their families? Yeah, so these resources are available for anyone who wants to go to the site and sign up to access that Advent resource library. You don't have to have the book. Um, some of them will make more sense if you have the book because they kind of correlate to different names or different themes of Advent, but you can definitely um, access that content if you don't own a copy of the book either. And if you are able to afford the book, it's not very expensive. I am looking at Amazon right now as I'm recording this. A hardcover at the time of this recording is less than $11. It, it is gorgeous. I have a copy somewhere. Um, it is literally when I got this, I was like, man, I need to use First Name Publisher because your books are the most gorgeous books that I have ever had in this house. That's just the truth. They're 
gorgeous. Thank you, Brittany. Yeah, and they do. I've heard from a lot of readers who um, have bought copies of the book for um, giving away as gifts because we all have that person in our life that we just don't know what to get them. They have everything. Um, and the book, it really looks like a gift book, like something that you can give and feel good about giving um, because it's a book that you'll treasure for years to come. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So before we wrap things up here today, I wanted to ask you one more question. So as people are thinking about the Advent season is now upon us, it's only a few more weeks until Christmas, and we need to start preparing. Um, so if there's somebody who is brand new to Advent, no experience with it, wants to start, not sure where to start, obviously they should go get your book. Um, it's a great, super user-friendly, easy to start with, but is there any other advice that you would give to someone who is brand new to Advent and doesn't know where to begin? Yeah, I would encourage you to just set aside two minutes each day to spend with Jesus. And I mean, this is applicable whether you're in Advent or the new year or halfway through the year. Um, it's it's easy for us to get caught up with our to-do list and with the things that are pressing and urgent and that crowds out the important time with the Lord. But I would just say, especially during Advent, you know, whether you have a copy of the book or not, carve aside two minutes a day to be quiet with Jesus. You know, if you are already having, if you already have a time that you sit down with the Bible to read and pray, that's wonderful. I would say add on two minutes of just quiet. Just be with Jesus. He is alive. He is living. He is a person that wants a relationship with us. And so if you are just starting out with Advent, look for a time during your day when you first wake up, when you're brewing your coffee, when you're in your lunchroom, before you go to bed. Spend two minutes with Jesus because time spent with Jesus is always time well spent. Well, thank you so much, Asherita, for agreeing to talk with us about Advent today. It has been really great talking to you. It's been my pleasure, Brittany. Thank you so much for having me on. All right, so that just about does it for this week's podcast episode. If you are interested in checking out Asherita's book, Unwrapping the Names of Jesus, an Advent devotional, or any of the free resources that she mentioned during today's podcast, definitely make sure you go ahead and check out the show notes where I have links to both her book, all the free resources, and a bunch of other blog posts that I think you're going to find really helpful as well. And as always, here is your friendly reminder. If you have not subscribed to this channel yet, what are you waiting for? We have so much helpful content that we come back week after week to inspire you, to encourage you, and to challenge you to be all in in faith and family. And we would love to have you as a part of our community. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you have not already. And I will be back to bring you more content soon. All right. Bye.